Hi, I'm Sandra. I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a simple cardigan step by step. I've got my paint box yarn and my hook. So let's go. Hello everyone. Let's get started on our crochet cardigan. Uh, I'm going to be using my eye hook, which is 5.5 millimeters. This shade I'm using for one of my cardigans is the caramel shade, which I quite like warm honey sort of shade. To start off, we're going to form a slip knot. Now, in order to do that, lay the yarn over your hand and we're going to just twist or bring the yarn around twice, like so. Then all you do is pick up the back one, pop it over the top, over to the front, pick up the new back one over this one and also off your finger. All right, I'll do that one more time. Pick up bunny hop over and bunny hop again and making sure this one stays on all the way off. There you've got your slip knot and then all you need to do is pop your hook in in place of your finger. And then pull tight fairly tight and to start your cardigan we're going to be working from the top or the neck down so we're going to chain for every size we'll chain 51. So to do that I'll take you through a few of the chains and then meet you back at the end. So we yarn over and pull the yarn through that's one chain yarn over again, two, three and you can see how I tilt my hook in towards the V. When I say V I mean the V as in the point of the stitch here of the loop that's on your hook. So I'm moving it in a little bit to bring it through then I secure it four five, six and keep going until you have 51 and I'm going to just meet you at the end of the chain. The next step is to work on our fir very first row and for this row we're working uh, single crochets. Most of the cardigan will be double crochets but we will use the single for the this beginning row and then also for the ribbing. So have your um, chain ready to work into and work along back along the chain. To start with we're going to work in the second chain from the hook. This is the first chain here right up against the hook and your second chain is this one and we're actually going to work two single crochets into this chain. So single crochet we insert the hook, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. All right a little bit slower this time into the same stitch just for this one. Insert your hook, bring your yarn over from the top to the bottom or from around the back this way, pull it through and up, yarn over and pull your new yarn through both hooks. There's your two single crochets in the second loop. For every other chain we'll work one single crochet until the end where we'll work another two. So insert hook into the cha next chain, yarn over pull up loop, yarn over pull through two. Again insert. If your row starts to curl it's completely normal, nothing to worry about. Insert your hook, yarn over at the back there, 
pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Two more to show you and then I'll meet you at the other end. Our yoke starting to take shape and stitch count of 60. You can see that my V stitches are one here, one here, here and then again here. And now we chain two and turn. We're going to start with a increase which means we do two double crochets in the same stitch one and two and then we work two more one in the next stitch and into this stitch here getting a little bit of right sun there to the stitch here and then as a rule every time you come to your chain space in the middle of your V stitch that's where you work your next V so straight into the space here one double crochet one chain one double crochet just going to zoom you in Here we go and you can follow the pattern for the counts if you like we're going to work 12 now so I'm getting to the end of my 12 here because I can see the V stitch corner coming up and just make sure that you work in each stitch including this last one one here so if you've got a firm attention you might find this one looks uh, debatably not like a stitch in which case if you go back and count that'll help you make sure you're working in all stitches okay and into the stitch chain space here one double crochet one chain one double crochet and then one in every stitch to the next corner. You'll double crochet across here, work another V into the chain space, double crochet across, another V here, then you'll work one, two double crochet and two into the last stitch because you'll increase again here. And just coming to the end here of row three, I've done my last little V into the ch chain space here so one double one chain and one double crochet I then work one double crochet in the first two and then in the very last stitch here we're going to work two and that will count as your increase And as you work your way along, your yoke will start to take shape. And every three rows, or every row that we increase here, that'll start to bring this forward to become the neckline. It'll make more sense as we go along. I'll take you through another chain two and turn. For this one, we're not increasing. So we're simply one double crochet in every stitch. That is of course until you get to the corners. We are up to the first row of the body and also the separating. We're separating the body from the sleeves. So here's where we're at for my extra small size and I'll bump you in if you want to just check 
how you're looking here this is where the neckline starts to meet and as you can see this is going to be sleeve and sleeve here and what we're going to do now is work our first row of just the body so we'll work along work some chains here and join to the next gap here behind around the back here and do the same thing along the front change your ball of yarn here and I'll show you the simple way to do that would be to get the end of your new skein and simply chain two with the new one instead of the old one one two and then I do I like to uh, work over my ends for a couple of stitches as I go and then I'll work over one end I don't want it to be too bulky so I might work over this one end for five or six stitches it just helps with the weaving in of ends working over your ends is simply means collecting them at the back as you go so making sure that your yarn goes underneath your ends uh, not pulling them through or anything but simply working over the top of them so one more making sure my ends are tucked up there but still using just the one strand. So I'm going to chain two with my existing ball and I'm going to just double crochet as with the pattern for the amount of stitches that you have before your first chain one space. So before your first V stitch. So I'll speed up a little bit to get there and as we're approaching the first chain space here make sure you get each stitch right up into the space and then for this separating row we need to work one double crochet into the chain space then chain seven and I'm just noticing I'm running out of yarn but I think I should make it so one two three four five six seven and then what we need to do is skip the entire sleeve section here which means skipping each stitch until the next corner or the next V and then all we're doing rather than working our next stitch from this way we actually need to turn so that you're then working from the right side all the way around you then need to work in from the back here or from the right side so just make sure your um, your gap here is looking similar to mine and into the chain space here one double crochet hooray you have successfully separated one sleeve from the body now all we need to do from here is just work into each stitch with a double crochet across to the next corner or the next v now i'll just show you how to ch how i'm going to change my yarn and then i'll meet you over at the next corner now what I normally do is I will yarn over with the existing yarn so make sure you have a little bit left for that uh, insert the hook you could I'm going to I'm going to actually yarn over behind with my new yarn and pull up a loop and continue the stitch as normal with the new yarn so it looks absolutely as it should and then what I'll do is I'll choose one of these to work over you don't have to you can uh, weave them in later and you probably will have to weave them in to some extent but um, I like to just work over one to keep it nice and firm this is row two of the body last time we were working on row one and we were making our chains under the arms under each arm for my size i have done a 
an increase at the start. So I've worked two double crochets into the first stitch here, then one in each stitch along here to the first set of seven chains. So just make sure you've got the correct number of stitches before you hit the chain. There's actually one more than I usually, there's one more here. I um, tend to think that that's, that's the first chain, but no, that's a stitch. And then all we need to do is simply work seven double crochets along the chain section um, and we work into the chain just to keep it mainly to keep your count but if you work into the chain space you run the risk of your stitches sliding so here we go there's three And then we're up to five, two more. And the last one here, got my seven. And then we just work straight into the next stitch and continue on with your double crochet stitching all the way along the back of your cardigan, along the back we work and then we hit the next set of seven, seven stitches into those all the way around the front here and in the last stitch for my size I'm going to be working two in the last stitch so it depends on your size and once you've worked that second row it'll be nice and easy now just to work one double crochet in every stitch for every row with the exception of one or two increases depending on your size. Okay so we're working our ribbing for the bottom of the cardigan now. This is where we've finished off. This is the left hand side of your cardigan and just a note for where it says left hand that means when you're wearing it so not when you're looking at it so this is when I this is my left hand side and I haven't chained two if you've already got chain two then just chain nine more I'm going to chain 11 and you'll want 11 all together we're then going to work single crochets into every chain aside from the first one. So working the first single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So that will end up with 10 in our row. So inserting your hook into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna repeat that all the way back down to the cardigan. Counting to check, two, four, six, eight, ten. So there's row one of our ribbing. Now we're going to need to anchor it into the cardigan itself and we're going to skip this first stitch because we're going to pretend that the first row of chains came from this first stitch whereas we know it came from the very end uh, but it pretty much is the first one. So we're going to slip stitch into the second stitch so insert your hook, pull up a loop and pull it right through both hooks, so both loops, sorry. And we're going to repeat that one more time into the next stitch. So each time we anchor the row back into the cardigan, we'll slip stitch twice into two stitches. We're going to chain one and turn. And now this is the first row of single crochets into the back loop of the stitch only. And every single row from now on will be exactly the same as this. So as you can see, my stitches 
you can see the V's made by each stitch. So each stitch has two little loops. We're only going to go into one of them and we're going into the back one. So this is the front one, meaning this is facing forward. This is the one behind. So we're skipping the first two slip, slip stitches, making sure we always skip those two, but don't miss the first stitch. And into the back loop, pull up a loop, ordinary single crochet. Right up to the last one, make sure you don't leave the last one out. I do suggest you count the stitches regularly, every two rows or so, especially if you're a beginner. Um, it's just very frustrating to have done eight or nine or more rows and look back and realize you've, you've dropped a stitch somewhere. So we're going to chain one and turn again and back over. And then exact, in exactly the same way, we're going to single crochet into the first. Just make sure you don't miss this first one. It is easy to sometimes, especially if you have a firm tension. Into the first one and then into every back loop, right back down to your cardigan. And again on this end, making sure you don't forget about this little fella. My tendency is to have a firmer tension down here, so I'll sometimes this guy here can hide, um, but often I think it is with smaller hooks. It's that's more likely to happen. This size five millimeter hook H should be okay. But just as I said, counting is always a good idea. Into the last one, and then again we want to anchor it into the base of the cardigan and we're going to not be going in this one. This is where we came out of. Um, it's Because it's been used, it's pulled on and it might look like that's the one you're going into, but no, this is the next one here. Slip stitch and then again into the next one. It's important you do it twice, very important. Chain one and I'm going to maneuver it's up to you. You can flip the whole cardigan around if you liked in turning, but I'll to save myself throwing the cardigan over my shoulder. I'm hang on, and I've still got to go like like so. All right, we're ready again to skip these two slip stitches, and first stitch back loop only all the way to the end, making sure you have ten stitches. Come to the sleeve here, showing you how to attach your yarn to the underarm. This is the space you left right back after you finish the yoke. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to show you what we're doing. All right, so I'm attaching to work my first row as a right side row. If you are attaching for a wrong side row, you want to turn your piece around and attach this way. So you'll find your middle chain and attach that way, chain two. Just zoom out to show you what I mean. So basically, this is the, the top of the sleeve hole. And this is the chain area and working from the wrong side means you're working from the inside. Whereas for my size, I'm working to from the right side because that's the row I'm up to for my size. So I'm going to attach to the very center of the underarm. I'm going to chain two. Just going to slow that down for you and do that again. I'm going to insert my hook into the center chain. I'm going to yarn over with my ready yarn and pull that through. That is attached. 
that's what the pattern means by attaching then chain two one two all right I'll pop you forward and we're going to then work one double crochet into the same spot sorry this is sorry we're into the next chain or the next space then again into the following chains or original chains is what these are remembering that we chained uh, five or seven I think we did seven this one I've done five um, originally for body row one this is what you're working into and then we're coming up towards what I've called corners so these are the corners corner here and corner here and this is what we need to decrease over to avoid gaps so you can either work into the next stitch and the side of the double crochet here as your decrease or what I'm going to do here is work one more double crochet and then I'm going to do my decrease over the side here as well as the first stitch running up the side of the arm here so I'm going to actually insert my hook between the side of the double crochet not around the post I'm just going to force it in there and I'm going to do pull it pull up a loop chain out sorry yarn over pull through two then I'm going to yarn over and go into the next this is my double crochet two together yarn over and pull through two and then you're ready for the last part of your of this particular stitch yarn over pull through all three I'm going to repeat that for you so in order to reduce gaps around the base of this or the armpit of the sleeve I'm going to work a double crochet two together which is a decrease stitch yarn over insert your hook into the first stitch but in this case it's the the side of the double crochet so I'm going to go directly through the post pull up a loop yarn over pull through two then yarn over and jump into the next stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two finally to draw them all together yarn over and pull through all three that's your decrease or your double crochet two together after that's the nice and easy your double crochet into every stitch all the way around to the next corner just coming up to the second corner here of the sleeve the underarm area and I've worked a double crochet into every stitch I'm now going to work the decrease into the corner so yarn over and I'm going to work into this sorry I'm going to work into the side of the double crochet here and then into the next chain so it's the opposite of what we did at this corner where I worked into the side of the double crochet and into the first stitch yarn over insert into the post or split the post if you like yarn over pull through two yarn over into the first chain here which is a tricky one as well sometimes pulls a little tight yarn over pull through draw up a loop sorry yarn over pull through two final step yarn over pull through all three yarn over and then you'll have a couple more chains than I will because unfortunately I only have five chains here 
but work in every chain until you arrive at your chain three here and if you and into the base if you have yet to count your stitches here I suggest and if you have not quite got the right amount of stitches work one right into the base of the chain three and sorry it's a chain two not chain three and slip stitch to close chain two and then you can turn your work ready for row two of the sleeve and while I'm here I'm going to show you the method of joining that we're going to use from now on basically all it is is that your first stitch as with the pictures first stitch goes into the first space here not the base of the chain two with some patterns you'll find your first stitch will be right into the base because this chain two does not count as a stitch but what we're going to do is we're going to start into this stitch right here and we're going to finish the row into the base here so that'll make up for the stitch we've potentially skipped right at the base so this your chain two still doesn't count but because you're going to work your last stitch right into the base there that will mean you'll have enough stitches each time and the reason we do this is it's a cleaner join uh, avoiding gaps so your join line which is under your arm anyway this is a lot cleaner this join than it would be if we join if we worked our first stitch into the base of the chain two so this is round two of your sleeve i've chained two here and turned my work so i'm working from the wrong side now because my size we started with the right side it's the same directions now no matter what side you're working from now our first stitch for the sleeve join for the sleeve rows goes into this one here not the space here at the base of the chain two some patterns will ask you to work into the base of the chain two um, but for this one to make the join less visible we're going to start here and our last stitch will be in right up against the chain two in that space there that really isn't normally isn't normally a stitch first stitch is a decrease so a double crochet two together so we yarn over insert the hook into your first stitch yarn over and pull up a loop keep going with your double crochet so yarn over and pull through two then we're going to yarn over again jump into the next stitch that we're wanting to join together with the first yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and now you've got three on the hook and the final step yarn over pull through three and that is your double crochet two together or otherwise known as a decrease for this particular stitch you then go ahead and work double crochet in every stitch around until you are back to the start or back to the last two stitches back around to the start of round two of the sleeve I've left two stitches unworked as you can see there's your chain two and right right next to it there and then this space this stitch sorry and again yarn over insert hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two then instead of yarning over and pulling through two again we yarn over insert into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two finally yarn over pull through all three 
and that way you've decreased as it says in the pattern twice for this round we then join to the first stitch which is this one here with a slip stitch insert hook yarn over pull through and pull through again there you have your slip stitch join chain two and turn round three of your cardigan and just to start you off this is the space we're not going in this tiny little space here we're going to yarn over and double crochet into this first stitch full stitch is what I like to call and continue on with your round until you come back to all the way around back to here final stitch is in this space just to show you nice and clearly there's your chain two which is not a stitch and this is where your final stitch will go in join with a slip stitch to your first double crochet and this is the end of your sleeve rows and you're ready for your ribbing so from here we simply chain 11 1 11 and then exactly the same way as we have been with the ribbing down the bottom we're going to work back down with single crochets and then begin our ribbing in the back loops now it's important here that we work an, or, and anchor the row to your left so just be careful that you're working from the right side of your sleeve not the wrong side if you're working from the wrong side you would then anchor it to the right which is left but to the right of the right side <laughs> but importantly have it right side facing anchor it skip this first stitch because essentially that's where we've come from anchor it into stitch two here and then again into the next stitch chain one turn your work just to go through into the back loop only again same as your bottom ribbing and I'm going to meet you back at the end of your cuff just to show you how to finish off we're up to the last row or two of the sleeve cuff and all I've done is worked each row around until I can see that there's only one spot hang on so that one comes in there's only one spot remaining to anchor it in I can actually join it into here as well and this is where I have to decide do I want to do one extra row for room or is this enough now the couple of things that'll help is just to pop your hand in close the wrist and just check that it's got enough room and also if you've done the other one you want to just measure it next to the other one so in this case I have so it helps just to either count your rows and compare or what I find easier is just laying them on top of one another and working out that yes nice and even so I'm going to anchor in here and in fact because I'm not working another row I don't need to do another slip stitch this is actually enough so leaving enough room on your tail to sew closed your um, cuff you will cut the yarn and then pull to fasten off I'm going to turn my sleeve inside out 
And here we have it. There's my yarn, threading it onto my needle, ready to sew closed. There are some people who like to slip stitch closed. You're welcome to if that's how you've done things in the past. I find this a little easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these original chains, 10 chains, but I'm only going to go through the back loop of this side. So you can see the stitches along here. I'm only going to go through the back loop. Just that gives an extra little ridge when you turn it back right side in to add to the, your sleeve ribbing. I'll show you what I mean. So through the first chain here and over to the next side and picking up the back loop. Pull through, not too tight. That last one, a bit wonky. There we go. Careful not to pull it too tight so that there's no bunching. And then just to weave in my end, I'm going to feed it back through. When you're weaving in your ends, you're just making sure you feed it into the yarn and not be seeing much at all of your needle on the other side. It's up to you where you weave it. You don't necessarily have to go back into the same area. So that should be okay, but just to give it some reinforcement, I'm going to go over here and just weave back along to about halfway. Snip nice and close to where it comes out. And I'll turn it back to where right side in, wrong side, right side out, or however you want to say it. And there's your cuff. That's the, where's this? Here we are. Here's the seam. Nice and neat. And as you can see, the extra little line of the front loop that I left just adds to the ribbed look just to make sure that this section of uh, sewing doesn't look quite as obvious. And there you have sleeve complete. Just showing you now the neckline ribbing and I'm just coming up here to the very top of the cardigan. So you can see where the B stitches here were for the yoke. And I've come in here towards the base of the cardigan and I just wanted to show you where I'm slip stitching. My last slip stitch was into the spot between the rows. So this one here will be into around the post or into the post, whichever you feel most comfortable with. I like to go in to the post. The reason I like that, I'll let just show you, is if I go around the post, I feel like I have more pull, more leeway to create a gap. This one's got a double crochet here, so it's a little different, but as a rule, I try to go into the middle of the post, slip stitch. And then my second one is into this space here which is essentially the stitch space on the top of the double crochet, but I'm calling it the space between the rows. That's my second slip stitch. You might have done it at a separate, you might have done yours the other way around where you've gone into the space and then into the post, but this is where I personally am up to. Chain one. And you're going to work as you have been single crochet into the back loop chain one and turn and 
and I've just run out of yarn so lucky you you get to see how I'm changing my yarn during this section so what I'm going to do is have my yarn ready there Oh, sorry, finish the stitch first would be good. And then it's quite little, but I think I'll be okay with it. If I jump into the back loop, pop that I won't I'll pop that one down and pick up my new one to yarn over with. Pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through. Fairly easy. I'm just going to choose one of these little ends to work over. Save me a tiny bit of end weaving. If that's a little tricky, just leave it. Leave it where it is and you can weave it in later on. And back to anchoring and du double or two times slip stitching. So first one goes in the middle of the stitch here. And second one into the space just above it. And as I'm coming up to the corner here, sorry, I will chain one and turn in a second. Just wanted to show you as we come up to the corner here, just continue as you were. Um, there's my actual corner. I might meet you back up here just to show you how I'm going to head over the corner. Okay, so we're just working further up on the ribbing for the neckline. Chained one and I'm working seven single crochets into the back loops. And then I need to work into the side of the double crochet rows as written. So here's my double crochet stitch here. And as you can see, I've anchored into the little stitch space for the last one. So for this one, what I like to do is write this little space here. So it separates the actual stitch. So if I were to go around the stitch here, around the entire stitch, it just allows more space, uh, more opportunity for a, a gap in your ribbing. And if you can see how I've tried to limit the, the large holes or gaps. So that's the reason we do it into the middle of the stitch. So I'm going to slip stitch into this same space I just showed you. And then I'll slip stitch into the top here, which essentially is the top of the double crochet, or you could call it the space where the stitch, the little, um, the previous double crochet goes into. Now you can either go into the actual hole here, or you can choose to just go into one of the loops which I'm going to do. Chain one and turn. And skipping the two slip stitches, seven single crochets into the back loop only. Chain one, turn back. And repeat and heading up now to the top of the neck for your neckline ribbing so here we have where we're up to this is the corner that's a little giveaway tail from the very beginning of your pattern and you can see I'm coming in now to the 
to attach to the corner. To work over my ribbing over the corner, I should say. So here we have the gap between the very first single crochet row and the first double crochet row. So that's where I'm heading in for my first slip stitch. And then I'm going to go into this very first chain space, the very just before my um, my little tail. That's where I'll slip stitch. The plan is that uh, your ribbing will work over the bump that is the corner without showing that there really is a corner. So smoothly heading over the neckline. And here we'll work the first slip stitches into the original chains and show you how you'll be continuing along the back of the neck. So this is my last one here. Number seven and as you can see I guess what you the one I went into last is not essentially the first chain it's just the very last side of the, the single crochet row. So now we'll be going into the first chain which is here so jumping over the little knob here that was your first um, slip knot single crochet and again into the next space. Now these are quite close together you'll see along the back here especially if you are like me and you haven't chained particularly loosely you can see one two three four quite close together so just beware that you're catching it all of them turn and then continue on in exactly the same way all the way along the back of the neck along here, side of the neck to the next little corner and then working your way over that as smoothly as you can. You've crocheted your very own cardigan. If you head over to my Instagram at Little Golden Nook, you'll find plenty of inspiration for colour and texture to continue your crochet journey. There are also plenty of tutorials on my IGTV and right here on Lovecrafts, you'll find all of my patterns. Just look up Little Golden Nook. Enjoy.